Welcome everybody to the uh, Holiday City uh, question and answer session. Um, we're going to talk about stormwater today. Uh, we appreciate you sharing your lunch hour with us. My name is Rob Daly. I'm privileged to serve as the mayor of Holiday and I'm joined today by our city manager Gina Chamnus and our city engineer Jared Bunch who's at the end of the table. We'll bring them in in, ju in just a moment. Um, obviously because of COVID-19 we're not able to hold these public uh, meetings in person. So we're uh, um, at least thankful to have the opportunity to meet via Facebook Live to start this uh, important discussion in our community. Um, I think it's also important to note if you have any technical difficulties, um, this Facebook session is going to be recorded. It will be on the project website for Stormwater, which can be linked through um, our city website. So um, as the questions start to come in, we'll continue to field and answer those, and those will be updated on the project website over the course of this uh, public process. So today we're going to talk about the new stormwater fee that's being proposed by the city, um, hopefully clarify uh, why it should be important to our residents and what that fee is going to be, uh, at least how it's going to be proposed, and then start the uh, process of taking, taking public comment. Now why is stormwater important? Uh, what is it? And uh, we'll begin with uh, our city engineer, Jared Bunch, is going to talk about that a little bit. So, Jared? Stormwater is runoff from rain and snow and other forms of precipitation. When precipitation falls on an impervious surface, such as uh, concrete, rooftops, asphalt, it will get collected into a gutter. And the Gutter system is connected to a storm drain facility consisting of pipes and catch basin. So when the stormwater gets collected into the catch basin and into the storm drain underground, um, it gets then discharged eventually into the one of the creeks in the valley. Now, stormwater is regulated by state and federal requirements and the city of holiday is subject to these laws okay um so you know i think obviously everybody knows about rain and snow but holiday is kind of unique in terms of our history can you talk maybe uh, expand a little bit on the unique challenges we face in holiday yes ho holiday is very unique uh, it was developed or settled as an agricultural community uh, the early pioneers uh, started orchards and farms and built irrigation canals and laterals and ditches to supply water to these farms. And over time, these farms were developed as family, single family residential lots. And with this development, an increase in impervious surface resulted. Uh, these irrigation systems were converted into storm drain systems and these irrigation systems were not built to adequately convey the excess stormwater that was occurring from the impervious surface. And in, in addition to that, uh, there was a building boom in the mid-1900s where they put in a lot of uh, corrugated metal pipe. That metal pipe is supplied some of that infrastructure for our stormwater system, but it didn't complete the entire system. So we do have missing parts within this storm drain collection system. And those metal pipes are reaching the end of their lifespan and they're aging and are in need of replacement. Uh, so here are a few examples of the storm drain uh, systems that we have in Holiday. These are examples of some of the infrastructure the city of Holiday has replaced over the last two years. This is a storm drain that is filled with cobbles and sediment. It decreases the capacity of the storm drain system and it needs to be cleaned out on a regular basis for it to be functioning at full capacity. This storm drain line was videoed using a robotic camera. It's showing the corrugated metal pipe is rusting and it's got holes on the top and the bottom sides are also deteriorating. The sediment is hiding the very bottom of the culvert so we can't tell exactly what condition the bottom of the pipe is in. Here's another example of sediment buildup in a storm drain pipe. 
with some vegetative debris. This is a storm drain on 6200 South and Holiday Boulevard in the middle of the intersection. As you can see, the sediment has deposited and completely clogged the storm drain line. Here we have a flume on the upper canal. It's broken apart. It's being eaten away and it's corroding and deteriorating. This is a picture of the flume at a different angle. And this is after most of the vegetation has been pulled back. This is a retaining wall on the upper canal. A tree was planted behind it and the root ball system of the tree grew, causing the retaining wall to lean. This wall was replaced. This picture was taken in September 2020 during the windstorm when the canal was shut off. What it shows here is a sheen on the water surface. That sheen indicates the presence of hydrocarbons such as gasoline and oils. This is another example of deteriorating corrugated metal pipe in the city's storm drain infrastructure systems. Here's another picture of storm drains. These were removed on Cottonwood Lane. As you can see, the bottom half of the pipe is completely gone. This is one example of the many waterways we have in the city that are broken apart and in need of replacement. The curb in this picture has settled and has resulted in a low spot. The curb is in need of replacement. This is a picture of ponding water in the roadway where there is no storm drain system. This is a grate on the upper canal collecting vegetative debris and trash. This trash and debris needs to be removed on a regular basis, the service that the city provides. Okay, thanks, Jared. Um, we're going to move on to finances now, and I think uh, certainly the question that's going to come up is, is why now? Um, we've been incorporated for 20 years. These storm systems have been in place, and so why is it that we have to pursue a fee at this point? And the basic answer to that question is that, that our stormwater infrastructure has been funded really out of our, our general fund at this point. So it basically is thrown into the pot with our uh, police services, fire services, public utilities, um, and, and every other priority that the city council wrestles with when they go through the budgeting process. And over the course of the 20 years since, since we've been incorporated, um, flat revenues coupled with the inflationary pressures on the budget have really reduced it to the point where we just don't have the funding anymore to commit to stormwater maintenance. So we really need to find a way to fund this separately from other items that, are, that, that we have to deal with in the general fund. And, and this is the way that, that we're, go we're, we're going to pursue uh, funding our stormwater needs. And I should also add that nearly every other city in the state um, has imposed a stormwater uh, fee uh, to manage their infrastructure. Uh, just in June of this year, Mill Creek, who just incorporated a couple years ago, our, our neighbor to the north, just imposed their stormwater fee. Um, I also want to just echo what Jared had said earlier about federal and state mandates through the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer Water System, MS4 requirements, those permits that we're required to, to maintain and things we're required to do in terms of how we treat our stormwater has also added pressure on, on the cost of maintaining our stormwater system. Um, so the fee we're going to pursue is really a balanced fee. Uh, it's, it's hard to do something that's gonna be perfectly fair to everybody, but we wanna make sure that everybody in the city that is discharging water into the storm drain system uh, pays into the maintenance to include you know, residents, businesses, office, schools, churches, and any tax exempt organization essentially any physical structure in the city um, will be required to pay into to the fee system. And, and finally, it supports our uh, holiday at 20 preparing for tomorrow financial sustainability plan that has been uh, worked on with our citizen advisory group and they have come to the city council and basically recommended that we look at uh, implementing and imposing a stormwater fee as, as a long-term way to maintain the infrastructure inside the city of Holiday. So um, we're gonna move now to uh, start talking about the actual fee and the proposed fee, excuse me, and we'll have uh, Gina start with that. So Gina? Sure. So over the last two years, um, as the mayor mentioned, as part of Holiday at 20, we've 
we really identified and priced out a number of stormwater projects that we know we need to complete in the city. And currently, we have at least $18 million in deferred stormwater projects. Um, with a new fee in place, I think the first thing we'll do is digitally map and film our existing stormwater system to identify everything that we have and where gaps are in the system. And then next, we'll focus on cleaning and repairing uh, what needs to be uh, repaired within that existing network of storm drains. We'll fix curbs and gutters in places where that's really critical for water flow. Uh, we'll upsize and replace deteriorated storm pipes. We'll automate valves. Uh, and then we'll add new storm facilities as well. And then finally, we'll focus on maintaining and fortifying the canal in Holiday that's owned by the city. Um, and, and then again, I'd echo what both Jared and the mayor have said about um, federal and state requirements that weren't in place 20 years ago when we incorporated. This fee will help ensure that our overall system as well as our equipment and any new projects are compliant with those federal and state rules. Okay, thanks, Gina, um, for, for uh, providing kind of a list of how these funds will be prioritized um, if, uh, if we go forward with this proposed fee. Um, we do have a question about how the proposed fee was determined, how the actual fee was determined. I'm going to have Jared uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the city hired a consultant to build a model, and a part, of the, part of this model was a survey of the impervious surfaces in the city on each lot. Uh, the, the consultant took a sample of the lots throughout the city and found that on average, single family lot has an impervious surface area of 5,200 square feet. Uh, this, this amount, 5,200 square feet, has been assigned as equivalent to one ERU, or e equivalent residential unit. As part of the survey, it was also found that an uh, area in the city, on average, had a much higher impervious surface area. So as a result of this, uh, the city has created th three classes. Class one would be uh, the single family residential area with uh, 5,200 square feet on average imperviousness. And again, imperviousness is rooftops, driveways, asphalt, concrete. Uh, the second class is the area that has a much higher impervious area on average. And then the third class is our commercial area. The commercial area is highly variable and the city would analyze each individual site to determine how many ERUs would be assigned to that site. Okay, thank you. Um, if uh, Gina, if you could, could you just expand on that a little bit and take it out in terms of what we're going to propose um, in terms of how we're going to collect these fees? Sure, absolutely. Um, the fee has been structured to reflect differences like Jared uh, alluded to that exist currently in holiday. Uh, and maybe we can take a look at a graphic that we've prepared. Uh, the fee residents will pay will really depend on where you live. So looking at this map, you can see we have those two residential areas uh, Jared talked about. Area A, which is white, includes those typical residential properties that have a, a mean or average area of about 5,200 square feet of impervious surface. And then area B, which is shown in stripes, includes um, the areas around the Cottonwood Estate properties. And those have a mean impervious surface of about 13,000 square feet. Commercial properties will be calculated a little differently. So while for residential properties, we're looking at averages uh, in an area, for non-residential properties, we'll be surveying the property to determine a multiplier. Um, based on that ERU or um, mean um, unit that Jared talked about of 5,200 square feet. So our fees have been calculated based on the needs we've identified and then what we think a reasonable timeline would be to complete those priorities. Other communities, as the mayor mentioned, has taken the same look at their needs and we're right in the middle of the average of those cities that already have the fees in place. 
And finally, as the program is structured now, residents would be able to appeal their classification if for some reason they think they're more like a home in a different category. An adjustment and appeal process would be reviewed by Jared as the city engineer and then approved by me as the city manager. Okay, thanks, Gina. Um, I'm going to actually take the next question. How will the pr proposed fee be collected? Um, uh, as all of our residents know, we, we contract for a lot of our public services, so we don't do direct billing. So right now we're leaning towards um, really working through Rocky Mountain Power and just uh, if the fee were, pr if the proposed fee were um, approved, uh, Rocky Mountain, we would provide the information to Rocky Mountain Power uh, regarding a particular property and then they would bill for that and then deliver the funds to the city and we'd manage it from that point. So right now we're um, looking at Rocky Mountain Power as being um, our means of actually collecting the fee from residents and businesses. Um, so we have, it looks like we have about five or six minutes left, uh, I'm sorry, three minutes left it's looking like. So we're going to, there's two questions I have and I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Jared to take the first one very quickly and then we'll wrap it up. We don't want to take too much of your time. And the first question just came in, what is the current capacity for runoff collection? Where is it stored or where does it empty into now? So I guess where's our storm water going now generally? So our stormwater is generally, again, being collected in our storm systems, and it's being discharged into canals, uh, the Upper Canal, the West Jordan Canal, the Salt Lake Canal, and also Big Cottonwood Creek. Uh, these canals discharge into creeks as well, like Mill Creek and uh, other uh, creeks throughout the city, or, or the Salt Lake Valley. Uh, the current capacity of these systems is hard to determine. Uh, we don't have a very accurate master plan or stormwater model, and that is something that this fee would help us determine. Okay, thank you. And um, very quickly, how would the how would the eighteen million dollars be spent specifically after deferred projects are complete? What will fee be going forward? And I'll just answer that one very quickly because I think it, it's important that we be um, very transparent in terms of this fee. And um, though there are uh, bonding projects that are anticipated should this fee be imposed, um, where we'll make you know uh, capital improvements that are that are pretty major in terms of adding pieces to our storm drain system that don't exist now, I think the reality is that long term, both the old and new structures will will require um, ongoing maintenance. So I think it would be disingenuous, disingenuous for us to say that we're going to impose this fee and uh, if there's a bond associated with it, that when that bond runs out, that the fee would go away. I think the fee will remain in place just simply for uh, ongoing capital maintenance to the storm drain system that we're going to be maintaining. So I would assume if the fee were imposed, it would, it would remain in place at some level in, in perpetuity. So I think we just need to be honest about that when we're communicating with our residents and, and we're going out to ask for this fee. Um, with that, I think that's all the time we have for today. Um, I'm just getting a head shake from Holly. Um, I want to thank everybody again for, for logging on as we start this process. Um, I, I want to remind everybody also that this will be recorded. It will be on our project website. Again, that can be linked through the Holiday City website. And as these questions continue to roll in, we will post them on that site so you can see uh, what, uh, what questions our residents have and how we're answering those questions. Um, I also want to note that the, the initial public hearing on the ordinance that we're going to post uh, will occur next Thursday, uh, the 15th of October at 6 p.m. That's where we will open this public hearing. If you want to provide written comment uh, to the city through our city recorder, you can start doing that now. We'll certainly start gathering that. But if you want to address uh, this issue in person, we'll open up that public hearing on Thursday. I should also say that I anticipate that we will keep that public hearing open. So that won't be your only opportunity to comment on this. We know this is going to be, uh, anytime we, we are raising revenues in the city, it's important that we be transparent, open with our residents, and give as much runway as we can 
uh, for public comment before we take it to a vote. And uh, with that, again, I'll thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live event uh, addressing storm the storm proposed stormwater utility fee for the city of Holiday. Thank you very much.